Alright, so what's going on everyone? So today I just thought I'd make this video uh, just talking about the different cameras that you can purchase even if it's your first time, especially if it's your first time uh, and you want to start exploring more about different cameras and different gear. Um, now for this one here it's just more focused on the different type of cameras you can get so to start things off so right here we have the basic smartphone so this is a Samsung phone but there's also iPhone um, right here I've got a disposable camera which is just going to be representing the older digital point-and-shoot cameras and then right here is a advanced compact camera uh, by Panasonic so the LX100 Mark II here is the just a small rangefinder style mirrorless camera from Olympus. And then next to that is a is the Olympus EM10 Mark IV with the 14, 14 to 150 uh, zoom lens. Right here is a Canon 600D with the 18 to 45 kit lens. And just over here at the end is another film camera, which is the Pentax MZ50 with 28 to 80 millimeter lens. This is also gonna be compensating for some of those full frame digital SLRs as well. Right, so as a starter, most people, well, most people nowadays would already have a, a smartphone, like some sort of phone and most phones nowadays, and this is recorded in 2022, most phones will have either one to th four, I was gonna say three, but actually, well, most phones nowadays will have multiple cameras. So this one here, for example, this, Sam this Samsung phone has four different cameras. So you got three up here and one at the back for selfies. And this is what most people generally use as, this is what you'll normally use as a point and shoot camera. And that's why nowadays you no longer, you don't often see point and shoot cameras uh, anymore, ex except for waterproof cameras like the Olympus or OM system, TG5, TG6. So some waterproof cameras are still available as well as uh, point and shoot cameras with advanced telephoto zooms. So basically point and shoot cameras have been discontinued in some ways, but um, there is still a small market for it. But for some manufacturers like Sony, Canon, and Panasonic, they've found a good little niche, which comes in very handy, which is they actually make a larger sensor into their point and shoot cameras. So right here is the Panasonic LX100 Mark II. This uses a Micro Four sensor and the Micro Four third sensor is practically what most of the Panasonic and Olympus or OM system cameras use. So there it is right there. So that there is a Micro Four third sensor. The reason for a larger sensor is better for low light conditions, better depth of field, greater dynamic range. And that's something that I will be mentioning with other cameras coming up to these mirrorless cameras and digital SLR cameras. So another thing with now with Canon and Sony, they don't, they haven't made a micro four thirds sensor on their compact cameras because they generally don't use micro four thirds. They go from one inch sensor to APS-C, which is what I'll get into next. But yeah, so for a great compact camera like this, really, really good. Um, Fujifilm and Ricoh do make an APS-C size sensor, which is basically what this Canon camera this Canon 600D has. So this has an APS-C sensor, which is 
a 1.5 times crop so it's literally a f like a few millimeters larger than that of the micro four thirds sensor but it's still very portable however the um the Ricoh and the fuji cameras have a fixed lens meanwhile this this panasonic has a a zoom lens of 35 no, 24 to 75 millimeters so that's very very handy I'll just switch that off now now going up we got the mirrorless cameras mirrorless now is the the main factor that everyone is going like every photographer and videographer are going towards now because compared to the DSLRs DSLRs can be much bigger heavier clunkier even with the some of the can like not can lenses, the DSLR lenses I should say uh, tend to be much larger and heavier so with these two cameras so the, these two are as I said micro four thirds so they're much smaller sensors however some of the lens like most lenses you can get for a mirrorless camera tend to be much much smaller than that of a DSLR so right here with uh, this EPM one I have a 14 to 42 millimeter lens which compared to a full frame lens that is equivalent to 28 to 84 millimeters and if you look at that side by side with this 18 to 55 right there hold up you can see a pretty big difference there so this lens is much smaller than this Canon lens so that's always the advantage with these sort of lenses they're much smaller uh, even when you want to get more telephoto as well you can get a lens like this 14 to 150 which side by side uh, now technically the Olympus lens is a little bit bigger than this um, 28 to 80 but remember this is like a kit lens um, not a zoom lens like this one here is so and I do have um, a 100 to 300 millimeter Pentax lens of this one which is much larger than um, this lens right here now as I said many camera manufacturers are now moving into the mirrorless format so and what mirrorless is is basically you no longer have any sort of mirror so it's directly like small well, yeah, it's just a sensor no mirror mechanism and that's where the SLRs are slowly becoming more and more redundant in recent years so if I open up and remove the lens so as you can see here you have a bit of you have a, a mirror right there on just in front of the sensor and that's why DSLRs tend to be a tend to be a little bit clunkier than that of a mirrorless camera because you have this whole mirror mechanism to compensate now another factor about the mirrorless cameras as well so <clears throat> another mirror like another factor is you can attach on accessories like this external electronic viewfinder um, different flash units uh, microphones and mirrorless cameras have been advancing more into video such as the latest gh6 is now pushing close to 6k same with um, a lot of the sony a7 series and a6000 series cameras and i'm pretty sure fuji and canon are just slowly in that process as well um, but yeah so with those type of cameras they tend to like many of the mirrorless cameras are now fully taken over um, into the market and just being very popular now continuing on we have what's 
soon to be discontinued, the digital SLR, which a digital, so DSLR is short for digital single lens reflex. And as I just mentioned before, these cameras have a mirror. Um, this 600D has what's called a penta mirror. So the entire mechanism in here is all mirrors. Meanwhile, cameras like, let's see if I can fix that up. There we go. Cameras like this old Pentax MZ50 or the Canon 5D Mark III, Nikon or Nikon D7500 and D810s will have what's called a Pentum Prism, which the difference is a Pentum Prism is a big glass optic, which just rests in here. And so it's all one piece right here instead of mirrors, which are bouncing around. So it's a little bit more technical, but um, overall, a the Pentum Prism tends to give more, a better field of view. Well, I won't say a better field of view, but just better optical performance than that of a Pentum Mirror, right? Now, another advantage about the especially going into the mirrorless side is the fact that because mirrorless cameras don't have any sort of pentum prisms or pentum mirrors, um, anything like that in front of the, between the sensor and the lens, you can actually adapt DSLR lenses onto mirrorless cameras. So right here, I have a, a Pentax K2 Micro Four Thirds adapter, which is really straightforward to set up. So just remove the body cap part here. And with this Pentax lens here, I can adapt that onto the adapter. And then by removing the lens from the Olympus camera or OM system. And now I could start using some of my favorite lenses of from Pentax or Canon, Nikon, Minolta onto a mirrorless camera like this Olympus camera. And there are plenty of uh, different adapters for different um, mirrorless cameras in the market now. So whether you're shooting with Fujifilm, um, Sony, the Nikon Z mount now, uh, Nikon Nikon One. If you still have, if you still have one lying around, or Canon RF or EOS M mount, you can actually adapt SLR or digital SLR lenses onto that mirrorless camera because there is no flange distance between the the camera sensor and the lens. So no mirror whatsoever, and even just doing side by side. Cause you could definitely see, just need to rotate that a little bit. There we go. You could just see here that mirrorless cameras tend to be much smaller than the DSLR right here. Yeah. Um, now I could also mention Another factor, as I've just mentioned about APS-C mirrorless, uh, APS-C micro four thirds and full frame, um, those would be something else to consider if you wanna look into a different type of camera. But then again, I can always mention that one in a future video, the difference between smaller sensor, like a one inch sensor camera compared to full frame, APS-C micro four thirds and possibly medium format. I haven't, I currently don't have a digital medium format camera because digital medium formats can cost thousands, like they do cost thousands of dollars to purchase. Um, even some film, like even some of the film medium formats can still be relatively pricey as well. But this is what I currently have at the moment. Uh, this is just one I'm borrowing from my work, but yeah, so that's pretty much the just a simple video about uh, different cameras and what kind of one to 
look into if you want to purchase your own camera. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below about like if you have any questions about different cameras and stuff like that. I'm more than happy to answer those questions.